Well, we do have our first cohort is out in the field. We have two units, um, and each unit is with two to three individuals. Um, and so this is our next one, and so this will be another five units, which we're very excited. Um, but situations can change at any point, right? Although we've taken over 400 calls during the last month and a half, which is fantastic, and we haven't had any situations escalate at this point, we always want to be prepared for that. And it's really important that one, when people are in crisis, they're already heightened behavior, right? They're already feeling high stress, um, nervous, anxious. And so it's important for our, our folks, ACS responders, to be able to control themselves, to be able to help the situation and not be escalated as well. So again, we put folks through these really difficult situations so that they can practice, so that they can be pushed and so that hopefully when they're on the field, they're prepared to handle any situation. Um, I just graduated from social work school in May, so I have an MSW, but you know, I think the this real like uh, on the ground <laughs> training has been really interesting, especially um, live scenario rollout, uh, uh, actually trying to like use my social work skills in real life. It's, a, it's a, an experience and I think um, one that's really I don't know, um, exciting to me right now, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the big part that we're noticing, even though it's only, you know, 400 calls, it's 400 calls that police didn't have to go out to, right? 400 calls, hours of time, hours of resources that would have had to land on police or our fire department, and instead we were able to help that. And so we were able to, you know, they would see calls that were in their queue and we could take those off. Um, so. It's actually helping, I think, our hope, and we'll be able to track long term, if this is actually impacting APD and AFR in a really positive manner. So that's what we're hoping, and we're collecting lots of data to be able to share numbers and compare numbers and see where we're actually making a dent in the, the system of our public safety system. And, and I think the reason this department exists is because we bring a new perspective and a new energy to these, these crises. Um, and it's something that I think is a little hard to put your finger on, you know, but uh, one of the things I think we're able to do is just take a, a step back. Instead of trying to solve this particular problem or get this person to move off of this doorstep, we're trying to connect with them and to get them to understand that we are really on their side, and I, I think that's for real, you know? And our ability to, to do that is our entry point to really connecting them to the services that they need. I think sometimes there's this sense that people view them as a problem only and not as a person. And I think we are here, this department exists because we view them as people and we connect with them as people and we collaborate to figure out what they need and where they need to go and what they need to do uh, to, to help them in their life. We're really fortunate that we had an amazing group of um, new behavioral health responders. We did not lack of applications. We had, you know, even though we did some recruitment, we had a, a, a great number of people apply. And most of those people came with backgrounds in social work and counseling and, and even licensed clinicians that we have on staff. Um, and their, their partnerships with the community, their relationships in neighborhoods go so far because they are trusted messengers already, right? So they already understand like, hey, let me take the lead on this. This is my old neighborhood. I know how this is gonna go down. Um, or people who speak the language of those neighborhoods, right? We have Spanish speakers who know, hey, I can already tell that they're gonna need an interpreter. Let me just take the lead and I'll, and I'll bring you in if I need to, right? So it's, a, an, it's been a very easy process for us. And I know that it may not always be that way, but the reality is right now, because of the folks that we've been able to hire, People really feel like they can trust them, they can talk to them, they feel like they're people from the community. Um, so it's, we're very fortunate to have an amazing team, we're very fortunate to have the support of our police and our fire department and of course our mayor and his team and so this has been, to me, the first month and a half has been very successful. Number one, thank you all for uh, stepping up uh, to the role, um, you know, this is uh, nationally, you know, innovative. Like Albuquerque is doing an experiment that uh, no other city is trying at, at this level, right? It's a whole new department. And that's cool. That makes me, you should be proud of being part of that. Uh, but uh, so anyway, I just want to thank you for being a part of the new department. 
and uh, also very of a team for putting this together. And uh, you know, I think other than that, look, we're we are trying something that we hope is powerful. Powerful in that uh, it's the intersection of a lot of things that each of you already understands. But number one, it's getting the right help at the right time. It is freeing up officers so they can take violent crime calls uh, and EMTs where they can take life-saving calls. Uh, but theoretically, uh, we hope on a one-on-one -on -one basis, we're also going to help hundreds, if not thousands, of people. And so, uh, you know, in addition to addressing all those other structural issues about over militarization and over policing the communities and de escalation and all of that. So there's a lot to this, but it does come down to that interaction, right? And so it's pretty your courage to give this a chance. And also, you got to have a little bit of a belief in humanity. And I, I feel like it's the same in some ways with my job. Like, you have to believe that people, um, the, major the vast majority of the people, are trying to do the right thing and they're just frustrated. And some have mental and behavioral health issues. You know, and it's just acknowledging that full spectrum, uh, but it's also not giving up on them. And that's what's really cool about this department. So.